This short video is an introduction to digital storytelling and will give you all the information needed to create your own digital story. Now before we jump into that topic, I just very quickly want to introduce myself. My name is Andreas Schuch, I'm a PhD candidate and lecturer at the University of Graz and an English and computer science teacher. From 2016 to 2018, I was part of a team working at the Erasmus Plus project MISTI, My Story, which focused on developing digital storytelling tools and materials for education. So I'm a digital storytelling expert and you can always contact me at the email address shown on screen if you have any questions or problems related to digital storytelling. I'll do my best to help you out and to get back to you as soon as possible. Let me give you an overview of this video. First, I'll briefly talk about what digital stories are on a conceptual level and then I'll just show you a few example videos that other students have already produced. We'll then move on to some brief discussion and tips how to brainstorm and write your own digital story script and then how to subsequently turn that into a digital story using one of several applications. And finally, I'll just say a few words uh, about how you can share your digital story with us and with others. So what is a digital story? Well, I've listed here a few things which I believe are key to what a digital story is. Uh, from a technical perspective, you could just say that a digital story is a series of still images that come with a voiceover. And obviously you'll need a functioning microphone to read that voiceover. But really, the emphasis of a digital story should always be with the story and your voice. Anything extra like images, transitions, uh, perhaps sound effects, they should only ever be there to emphasize story and story delivery. So, so technology is here to emphasize story and story delivery. They should never distract. A common mistake, for example, is including too many pictures, which often turns the digital story into a slideshow with a new picture appearing every other second. This usually distracts more from the story than it helps, really. So I suggest you keep the number of still images in your story low. Even having just one picture is fine, really. And please do not include any moving images, also known as a video. The kind of digital stories we're trying to create here only ever include still images, never video. Your digital story should focus on just one aspect of your life, on just one memory. Like, for example, a special person or a special relationship with a person. Maybe a special object in your life or a special moment or event. It could also be about an important accomplishment or maybe a recurring thought that you have. Your story should also focus on just one personal memory and include many personal elements. Now, when we say personal, we mean it in a very broad sense, and it just really means that you share something personal about yourself. Personal is not a of private. It is up to you what and how much you want to share with us. This can mean you share some private details about your life, perhaps even very intimate details if you feel comfortable doing so. But personal can also just mean including pictures that you took, your personal pictures if you will, and share your personal impressions, thoughts and opinions on a topic in a more abstract manner. You'll also see this variety in the example videos which we'll see in a moment. You'll see that digital storytelling is rather flexible and allows for much room to be creative. As for length, we suggest you keep your story short with a suggested runtime of roughly 2 to 4 minutes or about 400 to 500 words. It's important to me to stress that digital stories are very different to video lessons. A video lesson can be more understood in an instructive sense because it tries to teach you something. A digital story, on the other hand, is more meant to be expressive. It focuses on narrative and personal aspects and perhaps on getting across a feeling, a mood, uh, making some thoughts more concrete by verbalizing them. It's a much more expressive affair than video lessons. The way I describe digital storytelling here is just a very specific format that we want you to use. There are many other formats that digital stories can take, 
but we'll stick with this narrative-driven and personal approach. Okay, now let's have a look at some of the digital stories that other students have already created. Today I'm going to talk about a special dress and dozens of happy memories which I owe to a special woman, my grandmother. This is my communion dress, but for me it's more than just a piece of fabric. It holds many memories and along with the memories come lots of emotions. My grandmother made this dress for me, a special dress for a special day. I wore this dress and a headdress made of flowers at my first communion with pride. My dress was the only one that was self-made and I was really proud of my grandmother and happy that she had made this wonderful dress for me. And that's my grandmother. When I think of my childhood, I remember that I was always happy to go and visit my grandparents. Often, my grandmother read something to me out of old books, or we played some games together. But the best thing was when we went upstairs and she showed me how to sew. She was a dressmaker and had a small room with all the materials one needs for sewing. A vast assortment of fabrics and patterns, all kinds of needles, a sewing machine and much more filled up to the ceiling. Together we made stuffed animals, dresses for my dolls and everything one can imagine. We turned a piece of fabric into something elegant and cute, which always made me stunned because I could hardly believe how one could create such beautiful things. My grandmother also put together little sets of fabric and patterns for me so I could sew at home, but it was never as much fun as doing it with her. And whenever I needed something, I could count on her. She altered everything that didn't fit so well, and she always supported me with new dresses for my dolls and new stuffed animals, which I loved. But Christmas was the best. I know it's the best for any child, but for me, Christmas meant that I got my desperately awaited gift from my grandmother, a new dress. We always celebrated Christmas together as family at our home, and for me, Christmas is associated with many happy childhood memories and I'll never forget the finishing touch, the one thing that rounded up everything, the one thing that made Christmas even more special, my new dress, probably the best gift of all. It was always fancy and fit the occasion and every Christmas a new one awaited me. And I would want my future children and grandchildren to come up with such beautiful memories too. I want to show them how to sew and learn to appreciate all these small gifts made from fabric, which are so much more valuable than your actual price. One day I watched a movie called Plastic Planet with my old class because my teacher thought that it's a very good film with an important message. After watching the film, I talked with my teacher and with my best friend about this. I was really shocked to find out how dangerous plastic is for us and the world around us and that it's absolutely everywhere. I knew that if I want to change something, I have to start changing myself first. So I bought the book Plastic Freie Zone by Sandra Krautwaschel because I knew from a documentation that she tried to live without plastic for a whole year. I read the book and her blog entries. I was really fascinated. She totally inspired me to reduce plastic in my own life. I started with little steps. For example, I started using glass bottles instead of plastic ones. I bought toothbrushes made out of wood and made bath bombs, environment friendly makeup removers and stuff like this by myself. It wasn't hard to do, and it was a lot of fun. I also absolutely love the Lush store at the Hauptplatz in Graz, because you can buy so many things there without causing extra plastic trash like hot shampoos, body lotions, and so on. I also started to go on clothing exchange parties, which are a lot of fun, especially if you go there with friends. And you can save a lot of money this way. And you will also meet new people there who think the way you do. That makes so many things easier. 
you can exchange tips and receipts, and if you feel like you can't change anything by yourself, you see that there are many people out there who want to change something too. Together we are strong! Today I'd like to talk about my role model, my aunt. She showed courage and bravery in a time of political instability and ethnical wars. She managed to secure family safety while also making a very progressive step into modern day feminism in a third world country during the 80s and 90s. If you look back into humanity's history, our background was filled with wars and genocides. Ethiopia was also affected by this. The northern part, which has now become Eritrea, demanded independence from the south, and a terrible conflict broke out. Many Eritreans were deported, and many young people were shot every day on the streets. My aunt is called Exaria, and she was born in the north, but she grew up in a tiny village outside the capital city of Ethiopia, which is called Holeta. As you might can imagine, the people are living in a very conservative society because most of them are fundamentally orthodox. My grandfather didn't believe in masculine dominance and raised both of his daughters, my aunt and my mom, so that they would stand up for themselves and reach all their goals without hindrances. At that time, she already had her own kids and house and she was working as an engineer. But in order not to be deported, she had to give up her well-paid job and work in a governmental job so that they had a reason not to kick her out. The only important jobs at that time were being a soldier or a drill sergeant. Fortunately, she remained in Ethiopia, but as the political situation escalated, all of her belongings were taken away from her. So she had to live in a refugee camp for several years and start from zero. Holeta turned into a military station where soldiers were trained. And she was the first female drill sergeant in the Ethiopian army. At first, her male colleagues didn't take her seriously because she was a woman. But she proved her equality. She is the reason why I am a feminist today and I stand up for women's rights and she influenced and motivated me to always be equal in performance like boys and have a strong mindset about my opinions and actions. Now, after having watched a few stories, you probably already have a good idea of what a digital story is or can be. The next step then is to create a story of your own. And here are just some quick tips for writing your digital storytelling script. You can always watch more digital stories. They'll help you get a lot of ideas and get inspired. And they're also really interesting to watch. As for your own digital story, always keep the KISS principle in mind. Keep it simple and short. Often, less is really more. So make sure to really focus on just one personal memory, for example. Your story script should also go through several iterations. So rewrite and revise. And you'll probably also want to make some revisions after your first few attempts of recording the story. Do that. The story will turn out better because of it. When it's time to record, make sure to conduct a short test before and check immediately if the volume of your voice is loud enough, if there are no background noises and so on. Do the same thing after the real recording. Listen to the whole recording immediately afterwards. Our brain is really good at filtering out noise while recording, but the microphone will pick up anything. Finally, I've compiled a list, a list of more tips and best practice guidances to download. Please read through the tips document yourself after this video. It's also got several tips and prompts for brainstorming story ideas. So once you have got your story script, the next step will be to create your digital story. I've listed three easy to use applications for different platforms here. A note for PowerPoint users, you'll need to use the desktop version of PowerPoint. The browser and tablet phone versions, they don't support all the functions needed to create a digital story. There are separate video and text tutorials available for each application. The tutorials provide step-by-step -step explanations how to create a digital story using one of these apps and how to share the digital story with us afterwards. 
If you run into any technical problems or questions, you can always send me an email and I'll try to reply as quickly as I can. Let's say you have now created your digital story and checked it for mistakes and you were happy with the way it was and you shared it with us. Great, you are now done. There is just one thing we would like to ask of you though. You see, by default, you own the copyright of all aspects of your digi digital story, which means we can't use your story for various educational purposes without your permission. But we would really appreciate it if you could give us permission to use your digital story for research and for educational purposes like showing it in other seminars. So if this is okay with you, please send us written permission to use your digital story for educational context. There are several ways you can do this. One way of doing this is to simply send us an email. Any format will do, but you could adapt the template on Moodle to make this process easier for you. Another way of giving written permission would be to print out the consent form on Moodle and then fill it out and send us a picture of the signed form. Or you could also put your video under a Creative Commons license. You could, for example, include a small text box at the end of your digital story and leave a short sentence there. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. And with that, everyone is allowed to share your story as long as they attribute you or your online name, leave your story as is and don't use it commercially. This license is rather restrictive. Uh, you could also use the license on the right, which is less restrictive. If you choose to use a Creative Commons license, please don't forget to add your name or a nickname that we can attribute the video to. Again, by default, we won't do anything with your digital story. If you don't give us permission, we will of course respect this. Having said that, we would deeply appreciate getting these permissions to use your digital story for various educational contexts. And with the first two options, there is also the chance to revoke your permission at any time in the future, if you should so desire. Here are some further resources and links about digital storytelling in general, if you are interested in learning more. And there are also links to websites with lots of example digital stories that are just interesting to watch too. And that's it for this overview video. Please have a look at the other materials made available to you too. And if you have any further questions afterwards, you can always contact me at schuch.andreas at gmail.com. And by the way, this video and its contents are licensed under the CC BY 4.0 license, if not noted otherwise.